Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a great pleasure to speak about my philosophy or background of my works. Uh, but my English is not good, so I ask Noriko to translate in English. So let's so I would like to start my uh, uh, conversation today with my Urlandschaft. Uh, in, in German word, it's, uh, we heard that uh, this German word is more appropriate to what I'm thinking of uh, than English, but in English, it's my personal primal scene, which I, um, which built my architectural um, uh, landscape. So the picture you see is the, that of um, Suwa Lake in Nagano Prefecture, uh, just uh, west and north of uh, Tokyo. And I grew up in this area. Actually, my uh, I could say my uh, our land, our garden was continuous to the lake. So uh, Suwa Lake in Nagano Prefecture is it's in the middle of Japan, um, I, Japan, the country, and it's surrounded uh, by mountains. So uh, growing up in this area, uh, faced uh, with a lake means that uh, I always had some sort of sense of migrating nature. You cannot go one place to the other in a straight manner. You just always have to go around it. And this area was also a basin, which is which means it was surrounded by mountains in four directions, in all directions. That means that I had a strong sense of interior, interiority, uh, which was closed to outside. And I, uh, in this area, uh, there was always this changing uh, character of nature. The wind is blowing, and uh, the, also the sun, uh, uh, the, the light of the sun is constantly changing. So the, this feeling of fluidity um, was something that uh, I now think uh, really influenced my architecture. So this is uh, the lake surface in the cold winter. Actually, it gets very cold in this area. And uh, the, uh, the frozen surface of the water cracks and forms this kind of uh, almost like a bridge or street, which uh, people called uh, omiwatari, which means God's uh, steps. So another popular landmark in this area is this uh, Suwa Shrine. Now you're seeing almost like a building, but it's just a gate. And it's actually the sanctuary, sanctuary is um, uh, only surrounded, only uh, defined by four pillars of wood. So this, the, the, the spirit of God in this uh, shrine resides in this void uh, defined by these four pillars. And uh, there is a festival or um, yeah, festival every seven years to replace these four pillars in this building. So I would like to try to trace um, how uh, my architecture was formed because of all the things that I have seen and experienced uh, in my old, uh, in my childhood days. Now, the illustration that I'm showing is a map uh, of old time Tokyo, uh, which was uh, picked by Laurent Balt the uh, French philosopher. So at this time, uh, Edo um, 
uh, Edo, uh, Edo, uh, Edo, jo, Edo Palace was in the center. And all the street and water formed uh, like a spiral uh, along, uh, uh, on the side of it. So not really invading the center. Uh, the Edo Palace is now uh, replaced as uh, Imperial Palace where Emperor lives. And uh, so all through the years, uh, people uh, were not allowed to go into the center of Tokyo. We we're just living surrounding this area in the surrounding area, not being able to go into the into the core. So this is a, a plan of Katsura Palace, Katsura Villa. Uh, you might have heard of it's it's a very famous building in history. And as you can see in this land, in this site, what becomes in the center, what comes in the center is a water, land, uh, water. And uh, the houses like building structures like tea house and rest houses are all scattered around this water, meaning people just move in this uh, stroll around this area, around the water, not being able to go into the very center. The building itself is very beautiful, but uh, the water and the, the uh, garden gave me a lot of uh, impact. Uh, in my in thinking of architecture to me. So this is um, I, I'm I'm not be I won't be able to talk about every architecture uh, work uh, today, but I would like to uh, especially mention this very first project of mine, White U, and as you can see, this building also surrounds the courtyard. And the resident will be always um, circulating around this courtyard in this building. So in this uh, house, uh, the, uh, uh, the courtyard actually is not open to the house. Actually, the house or the house is not open to the courtyard. There's only very limited openings uh, to from the house, uh, interior of the house to the courtyard. That means that the people in this house lived in 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 that donut-like uh, space, um, sandwiched by two concrete walls, and continuously circled and circulated around the void. So as you can see in this picture, the interior of the house is totally white. Uh, wall, ceiling, and floor floor are all painted white. And uh, there will be slit of um, natural light coming into this uh, space. Um, this building is demolished and it doesn't exist anymore. The, another thing, another element that really uh, I take serious, uh, I take important is water or fluidity. One important thing to remember is that the, the people on earth are all connected uh, through water, in, in real through water. But today we can call um, information also a invisible water because that information connects people globally now. So the fact that people are connected and live on these two kinds of water makes me think, give, uh, makes me think a lot. So this is a recollection of what I saw in my childhood when I used to live uh, along this uh, uh, Sua Lake um, on a very cold, uh, clear winter day and probably twice a year, you would see this horizontal uh, rainbow 
uh, above this uh, surface of the water of the lake. でその湖のおとりに後に、えーまあ、あの小さなミュージアムをデザインしてくれたんですけれどもそれは、そ、uh, uh, uh, れは、そ、uh, れは、そ、like, uh, 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 れは、そ、uh, 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 Recreate this、uh, phenomena or ephemeral、um, natural、uh, atmosphere that occurs on this lake. Maybe the aluminum uh, sea, uh, roof material will reflect、uh, water or、uh, the changing colors of the nature. So, this is a picture of Sendai Media Tech, which you might know,、uh, which houses、uh, public library and other public facilities inside. This was probably the first building that was named Media Tech in Japan. So, this is the very first sketch. For the media tech.、Um, and I drew、uh, the, uh, the picture images, image of the tube structure. And I said there,、um, it's almost like、uh, seaweed floating in the water. So, what I had in mind was that the、uh, media is all, all, always is almost like a,、um, information, water like information. The water. The media and the information is like water.、えー、so, this is the picture completed、uh, of the completed building on the first floor, which is ground floor. And、um, as a matter of fact,、um, if you compare this realized building with that uh, 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 sketch, uh, it has more、um, stability and strength and、uh, rigid. Uh, rigidness of the material. However,、um, through these、um, structural tubes,、uh, people and wind and air will move. That creates a very fluid、uh, space, which is not defined by walls or rooms.、Um, and this、uh, gave me a lot of、uh, influence to my later works. This is a picture of、uh, Toyo Ito Museum, which houses my architectural work,、uh, in, um, uh, which is on an island in an inland sea in the、uh, west part of Japan. And here, the museum faces the water. And、um, I admit that for me, the water is always tranquil. And uh, uh, silent. This is another,、uh, another part of the same museum. And this、uh, structure is actually uh, brought uh, from Tokyo, which was my、uh, resident. So now this sits in this、uh, Seto Naikai inner sea. Uh, island, and now、uh, it's a public、uh, building.、Uh, um, an another aspect I would like to talk about is、uh, inner nature、uh, or interiority uh, of um, the sense of interiority. And this sketch actually、uh, this depicts my ideal architecture.、Uh, <laughs> So, what it shows is how people used to enjoy、uh, cherry blossom viewing. The cherry blossom trees are only in full bloom to be viewed、um, for two or three days in spring. And at that time, people would gather、um, surrounding the area with circular cloth curtains. And enjoyed being inside and、um, you know, drinking and eating 
and enjoying the cherry blossom uh, uh, in this season. Now, um, however, when uh, their season or the party is over, they will take away this curtain and then the scene will come go back to what it was. For me, this temporal um, character of uh, structure is something that I uh, always earn for in architecture. So a simple act of surrounding the area by cloth curtain, very temporal uh, structure, creates um, some sanctuary um, space inside. And um, this is something that it means a lot to me in thinking architecture. So this picture shows the uh, model that we submitted for the competition of media take. Um, as you can see, what we try to convey is the image of inside. Uh, we didn't have any image to uh, pursue uh, or express at this time of uh, facade or walls. And this shows an inside interior picture of a university library in uh, Taiwan. And as you can see, what we tried to create is uh, nature uh, in a very abstract form. Um, this is the picture of uh, interior of uh, Taiwan, uh, Taichun Opera House in Taiwan. Um, this cave-like uh, image was something that we started imaging uh, this uh, uh, structure and as you the facade of it is only a section of the cave so uh, change of subject here and I would like to talk about how I became an architect which actually a topic which I'm not always willing to talk about so in my high school years I was very keen of playing baseball so when I when we had when I had to um, uh, have entrance uh, take entrance exams for for college and universities, I was aiming for liberal arts so that I will have some I will have a lot of time to play baseball, but uh, no school accepted me, so I had to change to an engineering major. So uh, that means that the, if some uh, university or schools had accepted me uh, in liberal arts, uh, I would not have been an architect. So after finishing school, um, a graduate school, I started working for uh, Kiyonori Kikutake uh, whom have been introduced in the introduction today, uh, who is one of the metabolist uh, movement architects in Japan. So, but at this time, um, I finally, or at first, um, for the first time, started to think architecture may, may be interesting. And this is at the time that, that I was working at his office. Uh, so this is a picture of uh, uh, Mr. Kikutake and myself, uh, not at the time that I was working there, but uh, when Kikutake uh, went later, uh, when Kikutake was about 60 years old. Um, the, the reason why I start um, being interested in architecture is what he taught me. He taught me that the architecture is something you have to think with your senses and the whole body that you have, not the logic um, that I thought uh, I should use to 
uh, approach architecture. This is uh, my favorite, actually, my favorite building by Kikutake, uh, Hotel Toko En, uh, which still exists. So this uh, building depicts uh, the shrine gate uh, of Itsukushima Shrine in Hiroshima. So this is um, the uh, Itsukushima Shrine in um, Hiroshima. Uh, so when uh, Kikutake built that hotel, uh, that it was at the peak of modernism in Japan where a modernist architecture architecture were being built a lot of them and but at the same at this exact time kikutake was searching the japanese history for a, a element that could uh, develop the architecture actually much farther so um, the, the time that I started working for uh, Kikutake coincides uh, the Tokyo Olympics in 1964. Uh, that what you're seeing is this famous uh, Yoyogi Stadium designed by Kenzo Tange. Tokyo mm Olympic. -hmm. So I remember that uh, when this parade was happening in Tokyo Olympics, I was visiting this hotel uh, in Hiroshima. This shows what was happening in Tokyo at that time. This is uh, the area around uh, Shibuya Station, one of the major um, uh, parts of uh, Tokyo. Now it's now being redeveloped again. So this is uh, the scene from 1970 uh, Osaka Expo. Um, and this is the center stage uh, with the uh, roof structure by Kenzo Tange and the sculpture uh, called, um, I think, Sun, uh, Sun Statue or something uh, by uh, Taro um, uh, Dadisteki. Right. The tower by uh, Taro Okamoto, the artist, the famous architect, was the main uh, focus of Japanese people. And they were ignoring this great uh, looking uh, structure by uh, Tange, Ken Kenzo Tange. And I was wondering why they don't take any attention to this uh, structure. But now I think I sort of understand why and uh, I do like um, like to see the statue more than the structure. So that was a brief uh, history of what was happening when I started uh, working as an architect. So in 1980, I uh, participated for the first time at an international uh, architects conference called P3, uh, organized by Philip Johnson and Peter Eisenman. So I was um, invited uh, to go uh, with uh, by uh, Arata Sozaki, and we participated. Uh, I participated with uh, Tadao Ando, and three of us part, uh, went to this conference. And um, in f the face of all these great architects, I remember being very tense. So this conference was held in uh, Virginia. Afterward, we went to New York, and I actually shared a room with Tadao Ando, and it was a, a, a memory of us being very poor. So this is a picture uh, on the right uh, of Peter Cook, uh, who really liked visiting Japan. And he is one of my um, one of the architects that, that I admire and respect. So this is a picture 
when our office celebrated the 40th anniversary and we had a big party, me singing in the center stage. And now I'm kind of uh, embarrassed by looking at this picture. So this was in 2002 when I was awarded by a Golden Lion Award in Venice Biennale. And what really struck me is this very, very casual atmosphere um, of the ceremony, which was held outside on the street. So this was when I was awarded a premium uh, Imperial uh, Art International Art Prize. And I was escorted by this very famous um, Sophia Loren. So, uh, 2011 was a very, very uh, uh, memorable, memorable year for me when Japan, the East Japan, was hit by huge earthquake and tsunami. Next is, uh, you can cut this now and go to the next slide, but this is the when the earthquake struck uh, that was inside the Mediatek, Sendai Mediatek. In, after the tsunami, um, recovery uh, re development all built this kind of big seawalls separating water and the land, which I feel is very regrettable. Uh, so, uh, so in that kind of uh, environment where a big seawalls were built uh, by government, I, my my uh, contribution to the devastated land was this uh, home for all, uh, for the people together um, uh, in this uh, in this uh, destructed area. So this home for all still continues to be built, and we work with young architects, and uh, we build different places uh, as community centers, a uh, community. Um, gathering space. Uh, the home for all uh, is, an, uh, one of them is built on uh, the, the same island that I showed uh, where my museum is. And uh, this is not, uh, uh, it's not the disaster striking area, but it's also the same per for the same purpose. So these pictures show my recent activities uh, in Tokyo, um, I have workshop with uh, school children to think about architecture. And on the same island where my uh, museum is in Seto Naikai uh, Sea, in our sea, uh, we build a winery. Let's make this the last slide. Um, so you may think that uh, making wine uh, doesn't have anything to do with architecture. But actually, what I'm finding is that uh, uh, there are, there's always more to discover in architecture as well as winemaking. You're never satisfied. And you, have, you, all, you will just keep on uh, searching and start, uh, thinking, both in architecture and winemaking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ito-san, for the wonderful presentation and for taking the time uh, to share your thoughts uh, with, us, with us. It was uh, uh, for, us, for us a huge honor, and we really appreciate it. We have uh, many questions from the audience, and I will try to pick a couple of them, uh, which won't be easy. Mm. The... Okay. Go ahead. The first... Uh, question that we have actually it was also asked by the audience which is when not architecting what is your pleasure what's your hobby <笑>えまああのお酒を飲むことでしょうかねえ毎晩あのお会いしながらあまああえ食事をしております so I would say drinking alcohol or drinking wine. I always okay. I enjoy it every day with dinner. 
That's a uh, and that's very nice. We would love to join you. <laughs> 素晴らしい今度ご一緒させていただきたいです。<laughs> When you're in, in, in Japan, you're welcome to join. We we'll, we'll look forward to it.、Um, we wonder also、um, out of all your achievements, what are you the most, the most proud of? In the past, I have been a lot of people who have been able to do it. What is the most important thing to do with the people who have been able to do it? What is the most important thing to do with the people who have been able to do it? What is the most important thing to do with the people who have been able to do it? What is the most important thing to do with the people who have been able to do it? 若い建築家が次々に今非常にいいあの良い作品を作ってくれていることが、まあ、私にとっては一番あの、えー、嬉しいことですね。So more than architect, architecture actually, our, my former staff、uh, who used to work、uh, in my office became great architects. In- Including Kazuyo Sejima and Akihisa Hirata. That gives me a lot of、uh, pleasure that,、uh, to think about. That's very nice. And、um, you mentioned the museum, you mentioned the workshops,、um, you have the practice, you have lectures, big projects, small projects,、uh, the life in the city, but you also spend time in that island, in Imishima. What activities have given you the most joy and why? まああのミュージアムもありそれからワークショップもあってそれからあの事務所での仕事もあり子どもたちにあの建築を教えたりなさっていてそれで一方またあの大三島でワインを作ったりそこで時間も過ごされているわけですけれどもどのどな何をしておられるのが一番あの楽しいですかそれ,でなそれはなぜでしょうかえっ、ー、とまああの建築を考えることはもちろんあの私にとって、えー、一番あの楽しみではあるんですけれどもその例えば大三島に行くと、まあ、非常に美しい風景美しい海があって、えー、そこに、まあ、あ行くと、えー、全てを忘れてえー、ぼんやりと過ごす時間がある、えーまあ、そういう時間が東京から離れることによって、えー、またその自然と建築との関係を考えることにもなってくる、えーまあ、そういうようにその、えー、どの時間が一番自分にとって重要であるかとか楽しいかということではなく。えー、まあ全ての時間がまあさまざまにお互いに影響し合って自分を今の自分を形成しているように思います。So、um, it's like this. Of course, thinking about architecture gives me the most the, the joy and pleasure. But、uh, if I go to this island in Setonai Inner Sea, I would be faced, I'm, I'm ex- I would be exposed、uh, to this beautiful. Uh, sea and nature. And、um, there, I forget everything. And I just spend my time、uh, contemplating something which is not describable. But、uh, so, leaving Tokyo gives me a lot of actually chances to think、um, the relationship between nature and architecture. I would、mm-hmm. say that the, you cannot really pick one type of Activities or place,、um, but um, uh, is you know, being important or enjoyable. For me, everything sort of、um, uh, plays an important role in me.、Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Thank you.、Um, if I understand it right, you spent、uh, a, lot of, a lot of time in, in the island now.、Um, And there's one question from the audience、um, asking、uh, where do you think architects could make the biggest difference in the big cities or in the villages? Now, I'm going to go to the next one. 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 I'm going to go to the next
その、えっと、大きな都市大都市とあるいはそうでないもっと、まあ、小さな田舎のようなところと建築家がその貢献できるのはどこにど,どちらでしょうか、えーまあ、本当はその大きな東京のような大きな都市で、えー、建築を変えていかなくてはならない私は、まあ、今の東京のひたすら高層化していく再開発ということに対して、まあ、かなり批判を持っていて本当は今日最後にそのお話をしようと思っていたんですけれども、えー、まあ私はあまあ,あの今の大都市ではなかなか、まあ、自分の理想的なプロジェクトを作ることができないあのしたがって小さなあ地方都市あるいは、まあえー、島のようなところへ行って、えー、自分の理想とする建築を考えたいと思っているわけです。So, um... In fact,、uh, if an architect、uh, could、uh, change architecture in big cities, that will be、um, something that is ideal.、Um, but um, uh, currently,、uh, for example, in Tokyo, the way that the, the, this metropolitan city is redeveloped is something that I cannot really agree with. They just build higher and higher buildings,、mm -hmm. uh, which is detached from the nature. And currently, it's very, very difficult for a r c h i t e c t to contribute and change、uh, what's happening in the city.、Um, and while that is happening, I、uh, try to make、um, my ideal、uh, state of architecture. Uh, in a local city or on this island. That's what I'm doing. Okay. Actually, with the,、um, with the museum and the architecture school, you are leaving a legacy for future generations.、Um, well, we have one question, and also there is a linked question from the audience. Our question is what kind of influence would you like to be? For them, for younger generations. And I would like to link this question to one question from the audience. What is the best advice you could give to the new generation of architects? まあ、あのえっと、伊藤さんの,そのミュージアムであるとか、ご自身のミュージアムとか、はい、その子どもたちの対象にしたあの建築のワークショップなんかで。すごくその未来の世代にあるレガシーを残しておらしいらっしゃると思いますと、はい、それでその若い世代にどういった影響を与えたいと思いますかというのが一つとそれから若い世代にアドバイスがあのどんなアドバイスを与えられるでしょうか今私はまあ10歳から12歳ぐらいの子どもを対象にしてえー、その1年間子どもたちと一緒に建築や町を考えようという、えー、ワークショップをやっているわけですが、まあ、彼らは非常にあの夢もまだたくさん持っているしそれからまた少しこうロジカルにものを考え合理的にものを考えることもできるような世代です。それがあ、まあ、あまあ高校生になり大学の建築学科の学生になるとまあ、もうすごく常識的なあ、えー、大人になってしまっていて、まあ、そのことを非常に、まあ、あの残念だと思ってもう少し自由な、えー、そして、えー、豊かなあ、えー、思考ができる人たちになってほしいという強い希望があります、まあ、そのために私は子どもたちと接しているわけですしえー、またあ、まあ、その子どもたちが、えーえー、豊かなあ、まあ、建築家あに一人でも多くなってほしいという、えー、私のおささやかな希望を抱いております。Okay, so the workshop that I'm having、uh, with uh, kids are for the kids aged from 10 to 12, and we work together、uh, for about a year. 
to think about uh, architecture and city. And um, I would say this generation is still hopeful uh, mm -hmm. and at the same time trying to be logical and practical um, in, think in thinking about architecture. As they grow, to go, you know, grow enough to go to high school and then to uh, college or university, that's where their thinking get framed in mm -hmm. sort of common, um, you know, common sense in a bad way. And uh, it's a, a little bit pity uh, for me to be thinking, to, to be seeing them grow that way. I would like them to keep this free and rich way of thinking um, and um, that's why that, that's the reason I, uh, I try to work with them, uh, hoping that maybe we can add one uh, new architect who has free and rich thinking. The advice is what are you doing? え、I really hope that the kids, as they grow, um, they, you know, they don't give up their dreams and uh, mm -hmm. hopes, and um, um, and uh, and I have started to think that I will have workshop. I will wor have workshop with older kids so that uh, they keep thinking uh, as they were as they were thinking in but when they're younger mm -hmm. and is there um so trying to um to keep that freedom will be an advice will be that advice also for the uh, young architects maybe in the 30s or the 40s who are uh, practicing uh, will be that advice or do you have also um another specific uh, advice ま、まあ、え、お粗末というかまあ、そういう え、so as I see younger architects uh, in Japan, um, they are they lack uh, of critical way of thinking. Um, they are maybe very contemp contemplated, satisfied, and they don't um, criticize each other or criticize the older generation. But uh, um, so that goes to any architecture or society in general. They're not, they're not really critical about anything. So, mm -hmm. but uh, for me, having some frustration or anger in yourself is a source of um, energy 
for making new architecture. So I would suggest or I would advise that they keep the inner anger um, uh, and be critical to mm -hmm. what you see. Uh, Ito-san, what took, what took you the longest to understand about architecture? Uh, what took you? The, the longest to understand about architecture. できたことというよりは、まあ、一生これは、え、え、次はもう少し良くなるだろうと思って、え、それがあ、まあ、え、景気になって次の建築を考える、始めるんですけれども、まあ、同じことの繰り返しを未だに続けておりまして、え、何か終わることがないように思っています。So it's taking long time still actually it's taking my time. You know, it I'm still sort of taking time to understand architecture. Um, when you build one architecture um, and it, when it's completed, there are many points that I regret. You know, I would say, oh, I should have done that. I should have done this. And the next architecture, I would think, well, I can improve uh, this and that. And then you, you do this, you do work on this next architecture, but then you go to the same cycle you regret, I should have done this, I should have done mm -hmm. that. And I think this will, this is a continuous, never ending <laughs> um, path that uh, you walk as an architect. But like looking for the perfect wine. <laughs> perfect on a wine, you can find it in the world. Well, the wine of the architect I would say I'm a little bit better in architecture than uh, wine now at this point. Yeah, we, you are um, one of the most admired architects. Um, I think we all um, have um, followed your work for many, many years and we feel very honored uh, for your time today. Maybe let the last two questions and it will be quick. Uh, one is from the audience asking, uh, should we develop new building technologies or learn to perfect the old ones? Should we what? Can, can uh, we should we de question? develop new building technologies mm -hmm. or learn to perfect the old ones? Mm -hmm. 技術を生み出していくべきでしょうかそれとも古いものを改良していくべきでしょうかえ、ま、あの、ま、大変それは答えにくい質問ですけれどもえ、ま、あの、古い、古いものは大事、もちろん大事なんですが、それを新しい技術
特にコンピューターのテクノロジーというのは非常に重要であると私は思っております。So, um, all things are of course important, but it's more important to renew or revitalize this old element in a new way by using、uh, new technologies.、Uh, for example, in, among us in Japanese, there are a lot of long lasting. Way of living customs and、uh, words and so forth. And、uh, even though Japan was washed with modernism,、uh, deep inside, we never changed and we kept it. And、um, so, what is important is that the, what, what is it that the, the stays deep inside us? And、uh, we, we have to we find it and we have to. Um, revise it or revitalize it with using new technologies.、Uh, it, it's the same in architecture and、uh, for,、uh, especially using computer technologies.、Um, it's very important to、um, renew the old、um, things. And one last question、um, will be. That、uh, Japanese architecture is one of the most celebrated ones,、uh, one of the most celebrated of the world.、Um, for the ones in the audience who have never visited Japan, what would you say they should not miss when visiting the country? Japan's architecture is one of the most celebrated ones, one of the most celebrated ones, one of the most celebrated ones. あの皆さんの聞いてらっしゃるオーディエンスが今度あのまだ日本に行ったことがない人が今度行くことがあった時にこれだけは見ておけっていうあの建築はありますか、えー、まあ日本は日本の建築がまあセレブレイティングだというのは私はその施工の技術がいいんじゃないかという建築家というよりは。施工の技術が素晴らしいということによって、まあ、その力が半分はもうその施工技術の素晴らしさによっていると思っておりますのでまあそんなにあの日本に来てそのどの建築を見るというよりはまああの町あの都市を見てほしいとすごく思います。都市その日本の都市の中には、まあ、古いものと新しいものとがかなり混在していて決して、えー、表面的には美しいとは言えないんですけれどもそのなんか混在していることの中に今私たちが考えている建築の、まあ、本質が見えてくるような気がしています。Okay. So you mentioned that Japanese architecture is celebrated. However,、um, I think It's celebrated、uh, thanks to the construction、uh, technique, level of construction,、um, level of the, the skills and level of construction、um, technologies and technique in Japan. So, half of uh, architectural、um, uh, level is really achieved by this construction site. Of the work.、Um, so it's very difficult and,、uh, to choose one or two architecture、uh, for them to visit. But、uh, I would love to, I would love them、uh, to go and see the city in general and see what's happening in there. Old things, old buildings, and new things are totally mixed and、mm. in a confused way. And, uh, but、um, we should find、uh, the very important uh, element uh, of a future in this confused state. And I would like them,、uh, it's, it's this, this confused state, it's not no way、uh, beautiful in, in a surface to see, but、uh, there's some very important element in it. And I would love them if they try to find it. Okay, challenge accepted.
What, what is accepted? Ch challenge. Challenge. Accept yeah. So Accepted. Ito san, thank you a lot um, for your time. We really appreciate it. Also, uh, thanks to Noriko and also to Yuma for helping us uh, uh, coordinate in this. Uh, it has been a pleasure for us. Thanks also to the whole audience, people from many countries of the world, and also, of course, to our partners, Semex and Gida, for this opportunity. We really enjoyed it, and hope, hopefully you too. Uh, thank you. For, yeah, uh, thank, thank you for very uh, enjoyable questions. Uh, I, I enjoyed very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank, Thank you. you.